Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on board Tangaroa. This is part two of our adventures at Pirate's Cove to Corsi Island. We talk about the history of the cult, and we go for a walk and try to catch some crab for dinner. Hey everyone, we're the Carmina family from Victoria, BC, Canada. Last year, we decided it would be a great idea to move on to a boat, but not just any boat. We found a 1969 Stevens Brothers aluminum boat that needed a lot, and I mean a lot of love. Of course, we decided it'd be fun to make all the repairs and do the refit ourselves. After 19 years of marriage, this may be the end of us. Join us on our adventures cruise in the Pacific Northwest and getting Tangaroa ready for a massive trip around the world. The biggest reason I wanted to really explore De Corsi Island was the history. It was all about Brother 12. He was the most savage cult leader in all of Canada history. And seriously, a cult in Canada? Hello, that was like so cool to me just to read about. Brother 12 was originally born as Edward Arthur Wilson. He was born in 1878 and allegedly died in 1934. Not sure if he actually died. He may have faked his death. That's still up in the air questions. Brother 12, he was an English mystic who in the late 1920s founded a spiritual community located just south of the city of Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. It was called the Aquarian Foundation. Before he founded the Aquarian Foundation, he actually did a lot of traveling. <laughs> and while traveling, excuse me, while traveling, he really studied the religion of theosophy. Having taken on the brothers, uh, the name Brother 12 after theosophy, he established the Aquarian Foundation in 1927, like I discussed. The group's beliefs were based largely upon the teachings of, of the, the Theosophical Society. It's a hard word to say. Anyways, he published two booklets, The Three Truths and Foundation Letters and Teachings, which explained his ideas and encouraged readers to donate money to his cause. And you know what? They did. He also encouraged them to build homes in his colony, Cedar by the Sea, which he was setting up near Nanaimo, Vancouver Island, with the goal of creating a self-sufficient community independent of the outside world. The Aquarian Foundation acquired additional property on nearby Valdez Island and De Corsi Island. Again, there's the history. That's exactly why we wanted to go to De Corsi and check it out largely through donations from wealthy socialites and from one big one named Mary Connolly, who was from Asheville, North Carolina. He was very good at wooing the widows, especially the ones with money. And he had some businessmen also invest all their life savings into his, into his cult, into the Aquarium Foundation. So other followers also gave donations, again, large and small, to support Brother 12's work as a spiritual teacher, as well as his political activity in support of the Democratic Senator from Alabama, James Thomas Heffin, who ultimately supported Herbert Hoover, but was for a while a third party candidate in the 1928 presidential election in the United States. Unfortunately, an insurrection developed within the ranks of the colony when Brother 12's critics charged that he had claimed to be the reincarnation of the Egyptian god Osiris, though he replied that he had been speaking figuratively that Osiris and Isis were male and female principles in nature. Still, Brother 12's misuse of foundation funds and the extramarital affair with a woman he had claimed was his soulmate led to the breakup of the colony. The Aquarian Foundation was legally dissolved in 1929, though he continued his work with the followers who had remained loyal to him during the crisis, as well as a number of new recruits. As time passed, Brother 12 became increasingly dicta dictatorial and paranoid. He fortified his island, which is why we, I show you the machine gun uh, fortification there. So he fortified the island kingdom and reportedly accumulated a fortune in gold. His mistress, Mabel Scottow, nee Robotham, under the name Madame Z, worked the members without respite. The task being given considered tests of their fitness to advance spiritually. One man who had been imprisoned in a cellar on the northern end of Valdez Island managed to row to Nanaimo to report the circumstances to the British Columbia Provincial Police, who investigated but took no further action. There's a lot of, again, this is where you got the word savage from. Stuff was going on and I don't think everybody knew what was going on. There was actually rumor that they found a human skull wrapped in cloth later on on De Corsi Island. In a violent reaction, um, Brother 12 got really mad. He destroyed the whole colony. He smashed its building, farm equipment, and scuttled his flagship, the sailboat Lady Royal. Brother 12 and Scotow and Madame Z then escaped on their private tugboat called the Kunaten, rather than appear in court to answer to the charges brought by their former disciples. By 1932, they had fled to Europe and were reported to have taken a large sum of gold with them. Allegedly, this gold had all the gold coins were in jars. Some say it's still in the harbor of De Corsi Island. Some say they took it with them. Who knows where this is? Hence, Pirate's Cove. 
Wilson is reported to have died in Switzerland on 7th of November 1934, though people think he may have fabricated his death and he may have subsequently met his lawyers in San Francisco, whose son was provided an eyewitness account of the meeting. So who knows what happened to him? But again, the history of DeCourcy Island, in my humble opinion, is amazing. It was so awesome to walk around and really learn about Brother 12. I encourage anybody here, go to Pirate's Cove, check it out, read about Brother 12 and the history and the cult that was on DeCourcy. Still a wee bit cold. Oops, that one wasn't ready to flip. After a hearty breakfast, the kids and I were off to check out those sea lions that we had passed the day before. Yes, Izzy, the whole island was sea lions, and as soon as we got close, they all bailed. The funny part with this island is it's actually underwater at high tide. After they all bailed, they just swam around with their little heads peeking above the water, checking us out. Josh, I don't think it's legal. Hold on. Josh, don't let her go. Maggie, get in here. Maggie takes every chance she can to jump on shore as soon as the tender gets near. going on shore. Hold the dog tight, Izzy. There's so many seals. After our sea lion adventure, it's time to head on shore and check out Pirate's Cove. I dare you dig a little deeper It makes you feel a little stronger Who knows what you may find You'll see in your own time It might just take a little longer It all goes by so slowly Unfortunately, I never learned my lesson and I let go of Maggie's leash and she got lost for the first part of the walk. It took us a bit to find her. I think this is the machine gun fortress of Brother 12. trail. Where's Brother 12's trail? That's the one we're gonna go. And this is down to Ollie's Beach and campsites. Yeah, there's some nice little campsites down there for people.
Fairy hole. So these are the kids thinking it would be funny to take the tender. These are the keys for the tender. This is a good lesson for them to not push away from the dock until you make sure you have the keys and the tender with you. Hey Josh, here's the keys. Would you like the key? This is a good lesson of don't let go of the dock until the tender is running. What? This is a good lesson for don't let go of the dock unless the tender is running. Shut up. <laughs> Tow yourself right here, we'll get in. Okay. I thought you just tossed us the key and skipped the get in part. Hey! Yeah. See, these are the chains they have attached to the walls around here. They're actually kind of cool. We just taught Josh to make sure that when we hook on the chain, do not hook below low tide. Because that would be bad. True. Well, this is going to be interesting. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Can you... No, no, no. We need to be picked up at the dock. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the kids did come to their senses and picked us up at the dock. Okay, crab traps are down. That one, and we put one over there. And we'll just see what happens. We have a new drone. Blaine's gonna try flying it right now. Nothing like flying a drone for the first time over water. Oh wait, we've already lost one. You've got to go back to episode 29 to see exactly what happens to this drone. And you get to see Blaine go for a dip which kind of tells you what happened. But we, Dave and I, are gonna go get some crabs right now. We did not bring a bucket because we don't want to jinx ourselves. We think that's bad luck bringing a bucket. But I brought my crab gloves. <laughs> so, fingers crossed, we're gonna get some crab for dinner. Who knows? We'll let you know. Let me do this. At least it's not a prawn trap. Oh, there. That's two or three hundred feet. Horrible to pull up. Oh, it's another baby! Why do we get all these babies? They got no big ones around here, or what? Well, let's bring them back and have a no. crab stew for tonight. I don't think we can keep these it's ones. We cannot keep these. I know. We're just going to scare them. So if it sounds it's too Watch where you step. Oh my God. I don't know. I've got a foot holding this trap. I've got a knee holding this one. Oh. <laughs> so we're coming up to the boat and there's this ah! drop. Maybe <laughs> 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 we can pick up my missing tooth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right there. Okay, the wind has died, which means Blaine's gonna pull in the stern line. Dog's like, what's going on? Can I go to shore? What's going on? Sometimes the easiest way to push Tanga where we want her is to use the tender as a tugboat. Abandoned stern line! Abort! Abort! Okay, so we abandoned a stern line over here that was holding us during that all that wind. Now that the wind's dead, we gotta go get it! 
This is what you happens when you abort, abort, abort a stern line. These shells are like, seriously, look. All I did was trying to um, put the stern line on so I can grab, sorry, the bow line on so I can grab the stern line and yuck. Mm. I did an excellent job putting this rock line on. Look at it. Isn't she pretty? You're not allowed to uh, put stern lines onto trees, but you can put it onto rocks. Ugh, I'm still bleeding. Ugh. Okay, it's becoming a crime scene on the beach. Look at it. Ugh. Okay, line's off. I gotta take it back to shore now, let Blaine haul it in. I got back to the boat to find out that the kids determined they were hungry. Looks yummy is. You're not making a spider dog. No. You, know. you okay? I'm tired. I can still eat it. Yep. Toasty. That's not toasty hot dog. I think it's okay. Perfect marshmallow is he? Oh, that is perfectly golden brown on every side. Now what are you going to do with it? Eat it. S'mores? Yep. Get your celebration chocolate cookie. Mm -hmm. It's in the box that Josh has his foot on. Yeah, I know. And he's not going to take his foot off. He thinks he's smart. Yep. Hence the word thing. Josh. So unfortunately, no crab. But that's okay because we had steak and dad did a great job on the barbecue. A little bit spooky, but that's okay. And we had a great family dinner and had a good sleep, ready to head back home to Victoria the next morning. I'm not going to leave until I get to snuggle you for five seconds. Okay? Five seconds. All right. Yeah, I'll give you about ten minutes. It's a bit spooky in here. After dinner, we put down the blue light to attract fish just off of the back of Krista and Dave's boat and attracted this little, like, eel-like fish, which were so cool. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we take our last walk around De Corsi Island and Pirate's Cove and then make our way back through Whitecaps to Brentwood Bay.